Hello, my name is Lena Klerman. I'm a consultant and the chair of research in the Division of Nephrology and Hypertension at the Mayo Clinic. I would like to talk to you today for a short while about the potential role of cell-based therapy in treatment of renovascular disease. Renovascular disease is most often caused by atherosclerosis, a diffuse vascular disease that affects many vascular beds, including the one that leads blood into the kidney, the renal artery. Obstruction in the renal artery due to atherosclerosis is not a rare occurrence. In fact, studies have shown that it can be identified in almost 7% of adults over 65 years of age. The presence of renovascular disease has been shown to carry substantial risk for both the kidney as well as the cardiovascular system and has been shown to be associated with significant cardiovascular mobility and mortality. Interestingly, clinical trials have shown that restoration of blood flow to the renal artery does not necessarily and consistently lead to regaining renal function or even a better control of blood pressure. The, this apparent lack of significant benefit of restoration of blood flow to the kidney might be related to a persistent and lingering injury in the kidney tissue distal to the stenosis. The body has ample mechanisms in order to repair injured or ischemic organs and tissues. One of the effective mechanisms is a circul circulating cells that are derived from the bone marrow inside the bones and circulate in the body in order to serve as the repair engines. When they receive a signal of injury from an organ, these cells home to that organ and graft or secrete various products that can assist the organ in regeneration and repair. In addition, Many tissues also include resident cells that are capable of rejuvenation and repair of these tissues. However, studies have shown that in the presence of atherosclerosis or other risk factors such as aging, chronic kidney disease, or increased oxidative stress, this system can be overwhelmed and the level of injury to the tissue may exceed that it can be repaired by the endogenous circulating repair system. Furthermore, it seems that this, the presence of cardiovascular risk factors can also impair either the number or the function of cells that are capable of repairing organs. Over the past few years, investigators have developed methods and techniques in order to replenish this endogenous system. This can be achieved by supplementing progenitor or stem cells that are adequately functioning and can home to the injured organs. For example, to repair the injured kidney, progenitor or stem cells can be delivered into the renal artery and engrafted in the injured kidney. This may also be used to repair the injured kidney in renovascular disease. In addition, importantly, delivery of such cells could potentially increase the success of revascularization or restoration of renal blood flow to repair the injured tissue. Such studies showing improvement of kidney function subsequent to delivery of progenitor or stem cells underscore the role of this system in repair of the kidney tissue during times of injury. Furthermore, they support the development of cell-based therapy in order to improve the function and structure of the kidney in renovascular disease as well as in other forms of chronic kidney disease. On the basis of the promising basic research results, Dr. Stefan Texter in our division is currently planning on launching a clinical trial of this potentially useful approach to repair the kidney. Uh, this uh, potentially beneficial approach may bring hope and a new platform for, of treatment for patients with renovascular disease and renovascular hypertension.